DSpace Praxis Treffen 2022 sits finally the Praxis Treffen where we can say it is released, it is there, DSpace 7. Dot o is out of the door, the Space 7 quiz is available and to use for all of you. And we will have the presentation, I think many people are waiting for, a presentation about going live with the Space Quiz 7, Fraunhofer Publica. We have Giuseppe and Dirk here, the stage is yours. Um, thank you, Pascal, for the nice introduction and the invitation that we can present. Um, as you said, we are in the final stages of the go live. So, um, the presentation today will be a short run over the last years we have been waiting for, we have been working hard on it. And ooh, maybe it's a little bit pressure, more on the pressure we still have because in 10 days the go life will be there. And um, we are all hoping that it will go well. So um, my name is Dirk Eisenger Papst. I'm working for the Fraunhofer Competence Center um, of uh, research science and uh, research services and open science um, based in Stuttgart um, at the IRB. And uh, today I tried to talk a little bit about the project we had about DSpace Chris and our new publica based on the system. Um, and I try to make it a little bit fast so that we can have more time at the end for asking. And maybe I, you ask for a preview. I have some, yeah, some um, screenshots, but you won't see anything. It's only an impression. But maybe we have time and I can switch to the server so I can show you something. So let's dive deep into it. Um, maybe. Um, the marketing part is a little bit important for today because uh, Fraunhofer is um, Europe's biggest, largest RTO. And to have some figures and facts in mind, maybe explain uh, to you why we yeah, constructed or uh, organized our infrastructure, publication infrastructure, service infrastructure as we did. Um, Fraunhofer was founded 49 in the year 1949. And um, until today, it keeps on with the mission of combine the research educational part of the research part and um, the RTO part. That means collaborating with industry and uh, other uh, economical partners. So um, to understand our both sides we had, of one side, we are well connected uh, to the universities in Germany. Um, normally more than 90% of our directors hold a chair at a university or a, a university, university of applied uh, science. And this is a basis of our old uh, publication infrastructure because we are, have similar, similar tasks or um, requirements as a normal university has. On the other side, we are um, well connected with the industry and our partners there. I think you all know uh, things and inventions like MP3. I don't want to dive deep into this, but that means that IP management and patents and linking patents and IP management to publication projects, etc., is quite important for us. And we had some linking in the old databases and uh, it was a very important focus for us, for our, our specifications to take this special Fraunhofer need to the new system. Um, this slide shows you in a nutshell what Fraunhofer is. It's wide distributed over whole Germany. It's about 76 institutes and research units. That means we have 76 um, workflow, submission workflows, because each institute is individual and has own library stuff, for example. Um, we have more than 30,000 colleagues uh, today. That means more than possible 30,000 uh, researcher profiles talking in DSpace Chris language. And we have a yeah, a revenue only that you see, we're nearly 3 billion um, uh, of revenue. 70% is done with projects uh, of industry partners and openly sponsored project. That means that's the main focus we have. Taking this picture of this slide, I want to jump into uh, or switch over to the Publica relaunch project, which started um, some years ago um, to 
yeah, what was the idea? We had an old uh, Publica normal repository system. It's about a quarter million of publications in there. Um, more, some patents have been in there. Um, the data suffered one prior data migration um, about 20 years ago. And for sure, the idea was to get a new system, um, which should be a change uh, from a normal database with more bibliographic tasks and the normal literature repository to um, a new platform, which could serve as a data hub for um, linking and interchanging data, um, a, a, a base, a data hub for all kinds of research output. Um, I think that's the general output we can talk if you talk about the Trinity like literature, uh, research data, research, research, research software, patents, etc. And to get really a toolkit uh, for science and open science. Um, the idea of the data hub is not really a revolution. I think all uh, we are working in the same sector. So you, it should be a data hub to connect external databases um, with our internal Fraunhofer databases. Um, thinking and connecting it to the talks we heard before in this morning about um, Kibana and reporting. Sure, this reporting is done over a data lake. We have an internal data lake in Fraunhofer and Publica, the DSpace Chris system is only a source of this data lake. So we don't have really the need to make something like that. But here you see, we are part of a data lake like that. We are a source. And the idea is to be the open part of Fraunhofer in the universe of different databases, projects, and initiatives. Um, so as I said, uh, in 10 days, we will have our go live. We would say the phase before is something like phase one. And this was a phase of early adopter. I will talk a little bit later about that. And our main focus was the migration because we had a lot of old data in, uh, yeah, in, in different quality states and which we had to move to a new data model. Uh, we are talking about hierarchy, linking, connections, all this. And so we changed to some minimal requirements in this phase to get the go live done. And now after the go live, we are working on the data quality to add more research output objects. And we have a lot of other projects in mind which had to wait because um, we, the go live, as you can imagine, um, was planned before some year before. Okay, have a short view about DSpace Chris. Why did we took a decision to take DSpace Chris in our mind as a system? Um, when we started the project, we had a lot of specifications for sure. We have uh, special frown of our needs, but I think there are four main reasons why we decided to take the chance to, to take DSpace Chris and DSpace Chris 7 at the end as our source code for the new system. First, we wanted to have something which is open source. I don't have to discuss this in this round. I think we are all on the same side and that kind. Then uh, we had a special need for a very flexible data model. Um, third, we had experience with DSpace 6. Uh, we implemented our research data repository uh, for Datis on basis of DSpace 6 in collaboration with um, the library code. Thank you, Pascal. And uh, we had a good collaboration with uh, DSpace uh, Chris uh, 5.8 for science for internal FIS system. These are the main reasons why we decided, yeah, let's go for the DSpace Chris way. Now, why in this time, I would say we had two possibilities. It was uh, three years ago, it was 2019. And we could call it early adopter or on the snail trail. We waited, we worked on that. It was, it was a hard time. And we thought possibility one is, okay, let's make uh, a migration to DSpace Chris 5.8 and migrate later to do DSpace Chris 7. Or jump into the risk of, to, of being our early adopter and say, yeah, we go with DSpace Chris 7 and in this 
in the, with this decision, we are able to push the project forward. We wanted to be an active part, and this was the main reason why we decided to take the risk and the chance. There are benefits to be an early adopter, um, to be an early adopter, and we did it by sponsoring um, special features and cooperating with For Science, a really good cooperation, I could say, in this in this way, and. Giuseppe, who will take over the talk, I think he will talk a little bit about some features we did together, or they did for us, a uh, special workflow part, the DOI, and the deposit license part. <clears throat> but Giuseppe, that's your stage later. Um, I try to gain some time because so we have time later to discuss and to maybe I can show a little bit of the system. Yeah, that is only a small impression from uh, some sides of us. Uh, you won't recognize anything, it's too small. But I, the main story of the slide is um, that the layout matrix is one of the um, um, features we sponsored too. It helped us a, lo a lot to, to um, work on our uh, Fraunhofer uh, screen design and to accomplish uh, special needs we had from our um, from our central uh, division department. Um, the central idea is that we have uh, four um, research entries. One, you can see the research output, some for the projects, some for researchers and our institutes. This is the only thing I wanted to show here. Maybe if you have time, I can show you later uh, more uh, on, the, on the system, on the live system. Um, infrastructure, that is our actual, yeah, work focus, working focus. As we are in the final stages of Go Live, we are still testing what is the best uh, possibility, the best configuration of launching um, DSpace Chris 7 as a system for a product in, in a productive way, because we have a lot of test systems. Um, we are lucky that we have access to a um, internal Fraunhofer um, server cloud, so we can um, create, rebuild, uh, change infrastructure very, very fast. Um, we are using Ansible and <clears throat> for that. Um, but I think probably we will start with following configuration uh, in 10 days. We will have two Angular servers, uh, load balanced, a well-equipped um, REST server, and um, we will try to use a solar cloud uh, with a zookeeper. And the digital objects uh, are um, saved or in a S3. That will be our configuration, I think. But we can talk later about that if you're interested in that. Mm. Lesson learned. I think that is something I was thinking a lot <laughs> um, when I uh, when I built up this uh, uh, representation. I think there's one really one key lesson I would like to share with you. Um, we had the problem, as I said before, that we have a lot of data in a really heterogeneous data quality, and we had a change of the data model. And as you all know, the idea how to present an author and an author is linked to, um, to a person item in DSpace Chris is well organized. A link means it's a, it's, it's a well known person item. In our old system, and now we are talking about the user habits of our users, all our authors were linked in the old system, but clicking the link, was only something like triggering a facet switch. So we really think th were thinking about how to present this old data and how to change this data and the new data, which should enter about over the submission masks or over the uh, other sources and to present them in the same layout um, using the matrix layout. And as you can see here on the right side, we have a lot of authors. Maybe they are not linked because they have no person item in the Chris system. But maybe they are authors in many others, uh, other publications. And so we decided as a solution 
to um, build a magnifier button on the right side. Um, and maybe it's not a solution for uh, all the life, but until we have uh, data quality on all data that make it possible to only use the linking as we know it in DSpace Chris 7 as uh, linking to a special item. And we have uh, the possibility for users to look up um, the publications of an author in a facet search way as they got used to. Thank you. That was on the fast run. And I pass over to Giuseppe that he has time. And the rest time we can discuss. Please ask. And maybe we, I can show you the system. Thanks, Giuseppe. Thank you, Dirk. Hi, I'm Giuseppe Di Giglio from For Science. And now uh, I would like to focus more on um, the collaboration in this project with uh, for science and Fraunhofer and what this collaboration uh, bring to to the space Chris uh, seven uh, code uh, we started collaborating with the Fraunhofer uh, since um, the 2019 uh, with uh, an ongoing uh, support that uh, results on, in um, a continuous alignment of the Fraunhofer Publica project code with uh, uh, the DSpace Cree 7 code. And now we are also uh, supporting um, Fraunhofer for uh, uh, the go live phase. Um, uh, as we said, um, this collaboration uh, brings uh, uh, many uh, benefits to the, the Space Chris uh, 7 because um, we, uh, with the help of this, uh, this project, we were able to uh, improve uh, the matrix layout that is uh, the, the engine used by uh, this space Chris 7 to um, allow uh, to have a, a configurable uh, item detail uh, page. Uh, we have also uh, ported uh, just uh, uh, some functionality that uh, we have uh, implemented for uh, this project also in uh, this space Chris 7. For example, uh, the correction request. Uh, that allow uh, a submitter to uh, request for uh, a change of uh, uh, an archived uh, item if uh, uh, something is, uh, is, is wrong in, uh, in the item. Or for example, um, the opportunity to create um, entity uh, during uh, uh, the, the, the workflow phase. Uh, next, please, Dirk, thank you. Uh, this, uh, this collaboration um, was uh, a, a very challenge uh, for, uh, for, for science. Uh, we needed to uh, take care of uh, uh, a large amount of data that uh, this project um, as and this uh, uh, result on um, a better um, performance that now we uh, we can have on uh, the DSpace Q7 uh, code. Uh, for example, we, we worked a lot to improve uh, the performance on the, the importing phase with the DBMS feature, or also with the, during the, the, the solar indexes. Uh, let's uh, consider more in detail also uh, some of uh, the, the main uh, customization that uh, we have built for, uh, uh, for this project. Uh, for example, uh, the, the configuration workflow and the, the reserve DOI functionality uh, are uh, two, uh, two of them. Uh, can we switch to the next, please? 
Thanks. Mm, in, uh, in this slide, we can have uh, uh, an overview uh, how the uh, workflow of, of the Fund of Republica is configured. Uh, as Dirk has said in his pre pre presentation, uh, there are uh, a, a lot of library uh, that are working uh, during uh, the workflow. So uh, the default um, workflow system present in this in this space, uh, Chris Seven, uh, can uh, cannot meet the the, the exigence of uh, of the project. So. Uh, we need to, to build uh, uh, some uh, customization um, uh, by means of the, the configurable workflow that is uh, by default provided in the in this space seven and in this space case uh, seven. Um, just to have a, a quick overview. Mm -hmm. the, 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 work, the workflow is uh, uh, divided in, uh, in, in two, two steps. Uh, once the submitter uh, creates and deposit uh, um, uh, an item, uh, the, the, the submission go to uh, the, the relative uh, institute library who the user uh, as, uh, belongs to. Uh, the library team can uh, uh, approve or uh, reject the, uh, the submission. Uh, after um, the approve, uh, there is a, a further step where there is the, the central library can also uh, approve, and this means that the, the item is finally published or uh, reject and uh, um, this item can uh, go back or to the institution library or for uh, the submitter who don't belongs to an institutional library, go back directly uh, to the submitter. Joseph, we have uh, comments left. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, we can uh, just switch to the, the final slide. Uh, this is another um, uh, feature uh, that we have customized in the, the front of Republica is based on um, on the current uh, uh, DOI functionality provided on, on the Space Case 7, but uh, it allowed to um, request uh, a DOI, uh, DOI uh, during the, the submission phase. Uh, indeed, the submitter can, can ask the DOI to the library team that can uh, uh, pre-generate uh, pre once uh, and, and reserve it for uh, the, the submission. And after that, uh, the submitter uh, can see um, this uh, pre-generated uh, uh, DOI uh, and use it for, um, for is uh, for what uh, um, he can uh, use. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that it's all. Uh, now we would like to wrap up with the question from you. Before we go to the questions, do you want to show a short live demo or shall we start with the questions? No, we're, we can do both. I'm now on the live demo, so that's our system in live let's say um i don't know hope let's see wissenschaftler uh, so there's you know, the gender police wasn't there sorry to say that but we will change it sure that's only trying to find out searching for some researcher like me then you should find an item and you should see um the name in the first step and you know the orchid ID. You can put the picture. The picture sure is optional. It has to be done by the researcher himself, uh, him or herself. Um, 
there's a connection to uh, to the institute uh, where we are working. As I said, I'm based in the IRB, so we know it's it's it, there's a picture in there. We got contact and. As uh, each institute is in uh, in front of us, organized to another or group, like we are working maybe more in 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 the in the IT part or in the genetic part. So we're it's all linked. So we can really use uh, uh, the 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 great new scope which offers us a system to show how all the different uh, topics are linked. Um, we can, if you want to take me the questions or if you have something what you yeah. want to see. I have a first question for you. We saw that slide with hardware requirements, several servers, good web, uh, web mm. configurations. How well do you test and scope the necessary hardware requirements? Yeah, we are still in this way. Um, I think Florian is here in the panel too because it's under his um, survey. Um, if you're really interested, um, uh, there is a. I think Florian, you want to say something to that? We have yes, Jamie. Can, and yeah, so, thanks. so we made and we made an assumption and said so we want very very potential uh, hardware um, to uh, to set up for our go live, but we are still uh, planning to do stress testing. But um, yeah, we had a discussion with for science and they said, yeah, one solar server should be sufficient for uh, the deployment. But uh, we want to be sure that um, very a lot of queries are um, handled. So we decided to use solar cloud and uh, there uh, and, uh, and we do not use in solar cloud. We do not use sharding just we do, we only use replication. So we have uh, so we hope that we have the, the three times the solar power from a normal solar installation. But uh, yeah, the stress testing is just is, uh, is not uh, already done, but we are planning it before the goal live and um, but uh, now we we assume that our current uh, configuration which is very potential could uh, uh, lead to a success to a successful go live yes thank you florian so if i missed it but will the functionality of pre-generation uh, pre of dois be added to the space quiz so if you, if you answer that um the library could already made a pull request with pre-generation of DOIs for the space Chris 7. I know it misses some unit tests. That's why it's not merged yet. That's something we have to do. Um, but Giuseppe, maybe, um, you know, if your pre-generation of DOIs for this project is different from the one we submitted and if it will become available for everybody. I, I think that if the community is interested on, uh, on this future, uh, for sure, we 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 can port on uh, on the Space Chris Seven uh, main code. Great. So I think some something will come up in this way. As I mentioned, we have provided something already as open source code as a pull request against the Space Chris Seven, publicly available. It misses some unit tests. For science has a solution, obviously. Um, I expect this feature to come soon. There's another question that I would like to to put into. The lunch break. Dirk, would you be available for some more live demos on the lunch break? I don't know, five or ten minutes, maybe. Yeah, sure, sure. Great. So maybe we can put it, put it over there. Then I would say thanks a lot for this great talk. Um, let's continue a little bit in the lunch break, and uh, thanks again to Giuseppe and Dirk for this presentation.